Hi, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Today, we're going to share some news that we've um, heard here in the U.S., and I hope people around the world are talking about it too, is ways they can hold communist China and the WHO accountable for the coronavirus fallout. And so this we thought was very interesting. There wasn't really a, a video clip that we can share with you, but we're going to share some of the information from the article and um, the news that we've heard, and then some of our own opinions here at the Jan family, how we feel about what can be done about how China is dealing with this coronavirus, not letting people in. And so many, so many people around the world has been affected by us, us especially. None of us, thank God, are sick with the virus, but there are over a million people here in the U.S. sick with the virus, three million people, over three million and a half people in the world that have the virus. And here in the U.S. just today, it's 80,000 deaths and it's going up daily. Yes, yeah, just so sad how many casualties are going on and how many people are being affected. Like we can't go to school. We have to do online schooling and people who aren't Patients for the coronavirus are losing their jobs and other things are happening like we can't go anywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of people. It's uh, one in six have lost their jobs. Um, people are yelling at doctors and nurses. And there's a lot of good people that are praising the doctors and nurses and police officers that are putting themselves on the line. But it's crazy out there right now. And this is not the world we know. This has affected us personally. I don't have a job. I lost my job. Um, you know, my husband's job hours have been cut and every week to week, his company changes what's happening, cut some hours, you know, have some people uh, force retirement and then they're going to start cutting jobs. So weekly, we're kind of waiting to see, are we going to make it till the next week? Are we going to get through this? Um, and we're not the only ones. There's a lot of people on unemployment. A lot of people have lost jobs. Um, people want to get back to work. They want to support their families and put food on the table. And, um, you know, this is like the silent war that China has put on the world right now. And China has, being one of the powers is be, you know, is not showing any kind of leadership is shutting its doors and throwing people out and silence people left and right, silencing people here in the U.S. as well. And so we would like to share our voice about what we think should be done about China and how they should be punished or have some repercussions for this. And so that's what we're going to do today. What happened should never, ever have happened. China should have informed us that they had a problem. I have not spoken to yeah. They should have informed the world that it was yeah. the issue. We want them to be transparent. We want to find out what happened so it never happens again. Exactly. Fox News contributor Liz Peek joins us yeah. with the ways she thinks the U.S. can avenge the damage done by Beijing right now. Liz, thanks for coming on. You know, if it's proven that China intentionally allowed this disease to be spread out of its country and throughout the entire world, that uh, is a yeah. very, very serious offense. You could almost consider it to be like a, a war, a crime, a crime of war. Yeah. It's exactly well, that's it exactly right. Hundreds of thousands of people have died around the world and economies everywhere have been wrecked by this. And it's not yeah. even necessarily a question of intentionally allowing this virus to spread. Every yeah. damage that was being done in China yeah. for face saving uh, reasons. They didn't want the embarrassment of having let this virus wreak havoc on Wuhan where it originated. But it really goes beyond that. I, look, I think the good news is Many of us have written for a decade about China not being our friend. The words that Lindsey Graham just used, they are not our friend. And we yeah. need to do everything in our power to protect Americans from everything that goes on in China. And that means diversifying supply chains. We all know now yes. that far too many of our drugs come from China, for example. Exactly. That's unconscionable yeah. because China has actually used that against us. And we also know that their lots scientists of and their scholars come to our universities and steal our secrets. We know their companies take over American properties to get access to critical uh, materials and yep. supply chains. We really have to become tougher on this. Has nothing to do with trade, although that is another arena where they have misbehaved. This is important, and I hope that this crisis doesn't pass 
without Congress addressing these issues. Liz, you kind of yeah, just briefly went to. over some of your, yeah. your bullet points here for your plan to avenge U.S. COVID-19 deaths. And, and, you know, the first thing on that list is bringing critical manufacturing back to the United yeah. States. And, and we've we been saying the rest the of the list thing. here. Yeah. Like, um, bring it know, back I wonder if some US. of this is easier said than done. What is this really going to, to take to make this happen? Well, I, yes, it may cost America something to take uh, to diversify supply chains out of China. But look, hundreds of companies have already begun to do this. Yeah. That's and good. I think I'm more glad yeah. more companies need to do of that. Our, uh, in vulnerability to China, if you will, will further accelerate that trend. Already companies are moving to Vietnam and so forth. But look, we can make it attractive to manufacture in the United States. There are plenty of companies yeah. that do source out and of the United of States, and I know need jobs. That, yeah. you know labor rates are higher here, uh, and some products are not as easily accessible. But this is something that's not going to happen overnight. But it's mm -hmm. something that American companies need to be pushed to do. Right. Yes, they have to become a little more ingenious. But we've just concluded a big uh, trade pact with Canada and Mexico. A lot of products that are being made in China now also can be made in Mexico with much lower labor rates that are available in the United States. Mexico is not a certain ally, but it's sure a better ally yeah. than China. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing is that China's got a lot of the world by the purse strings. Yeah, and, they do. And they do. Yeah. How do you feel seeing so much of the world kowtow to that horrible regime because of that? Well, I think, again, what we've seen in the EU from Europe, European countries lately are becoming a little tougher. They are very needy. Look, Europe's economies are in the gutter, uh, but, but really worse than the United States. It's not just the virus. They have long-term growth problems, and therefore, yes, they're very vulnerable to the attraction of a big Chinese market. They want that Ooh. market. Okay, but they yeah. also have begun to but toughen their all this other stuff uh, that guidelines comes in terms yeah. of acquisitions of it. European countries. So that's a very good sign. Poor countries that have been caught up in China's Belt and Road Project, they're also turning against China because they see now that China is using Belt and Road to take over critical infrastructure that allows their uh, power, if you will, around the, the world to to uh, right. spread. Hey, so, you know, I, th I think this is the moment. This virus, it's not just Republicans and Democrats, it's yeah. true. It's everybody and every country has been hurt yeah. by it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the world has moment, to come together. Uh, this, to this confront is the China. Yeah. Yeah. Liz, this I'm sorry. Is it. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Liz. We're out of time. Awesome. We could talk to you about this for yeah. hours. I know. Great. Yeah, the first thing she says is bringing manufacturing back, which we need to do. We need to be self-reliant in our own countries or other countries. Yeah. But more in our own countries, because if something like this happens, we can be self-reliant. Yeah. Yeah, you want to be able to feed your people, you know, supply them with medicine and be able to defend if something happens like this. this yeah pandemic happens you want stuff in your own country that you don't need to look outside to china for masks you know um you want to be able to do it yourself and yeah everybody needs to be a little bit more self-reliant we're here trying to you know start our vegetable garden again and and so you don't we don't have to do so much uh shopping outside yeah you know if there's no potatoes at the store at least we can grow some or onions or potato tomatoes you know we need to be more self-reliant we do need to bring some more manufacturing back i think the, some of the things she talked about will definitely hit them you know a little bit you know and maybe not everybody's gonna do it but i think putting made in china on everything in bold in bold in big letters and people can decide do you want to support the chinese communist party and what they've done to the world right now, how they're not letting people in. Or do you want to support your own, co own country, our countries that are actually going through this that did not start it? Right. Or people that are, yeah, supportive of you. Um, they talked about, and, and doing it online too. People do a lot yeah. of shopping online. And I think making sure online says Especially on Amazon now. or Walmart. Yeah. Like, where is it made in? So everybody can say, yes, we want to support this country or no, we don't want to support that country. If you don't need it, 
um, limiting access to universities and labs. And I think that's a big thing, you know. They are definitely the copycat kings. They um, don't listen to patents from other countries, but they know if they patent it, every other country will listen to theirs. Um, so they're definitely the copycat kings in that. Um, shutting down acquisitions of the U.S. properties, um, countering Beijing's lockdown and news and social media. They definitely need to head more towards the democratic um, way. Yeah. Their, their socialist government is wreaking havoc on their people. They're silencing people because of it. It's just, yeah, they're supposed to be one of the top countries in the world, and they yeah. are not acting like it. They're not letting no. people in to investigate. Um, you know, they're trying to cover it up. They're trying to hide evidence. Um, you know, they're trying to keep swipe it under the table. It's just they need to let people in. And one of the other things, and she didn't talk about this, but we've been saying this at the Jan family, is just that there's, they have one of the top five seats at the UN. One of the top five seats. And they have veto power. And so I think for being such a high power country and having this seat, they need it to either be taken away from them or put on some kind of probation until they let the world in to investigate and find out what really went on with this coronavirus. Was it an accident? Was it something they were, you know, trying to start? A biological warfare because you know if some other country started this we'd be off to war you know 9-11 happened only a couple thousand people you know was devastating it was a shock to the world but this is like a silent killer this is yeah. like bullets flying left and right from china all over the world killing Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people and affecting millions. It's like everybody has a gunshot wound and it all came from China. It's a, it's, it's biological warfare. Even if it was by accident, if it was by accident, why are you not letting people in? Yeah, and another thing, like they have such a high seat on the UN. Like, why are they doing this? Like, yeah. and because they have such a high seat on the UN. That makes it even worse that they did this. Right. And that they're keeping their doors closed and throwing people out. Yeah. And silencing their own people. Like they're... And they're, people outside too. Yeah. The, yeah. People in the U.S. are afraid of China, I think. And that just, it baffles me completely that the Communist Party, the Chinese Communist Party has such a hand that has reaches around the world in different places. You know, they use that U.N. seat against other countries and to try to get countries on their side you know pakistan being one of them buddying up to them so that they can you know work with um you know they've made uh, fighter jets together f1s together that they've copied you know they're uh transferring nuclear power we've heard stories about that that yeah. we're not sure you know there's a lot of stuff and then and then Pakistan gets them to bring up the Kashmir issue at the UN. So they're using their seat to gain power with different people. You know, it's not just money, it's power and it's um, influence. And this is how you influence the world is that you set off this biological warfare by accident or not. It started in Wuhan. There's no other question about that right now. But you need to let people in to investigate from all over the world. And we think everybody needs to get on board with this. Yeah. People from everywhere need to say, like, there needs to be an investigation. You know, the Communist Party needs to be put on probation. It just has to be. It's They have such power right now, not only military, with the UN seat, money. I mean, they're top, one of the top countries right now in the world. And they have spread this all over the place and they're not taking any any responsibility for it none whatsoever the world really needs to come together on this and hold yeah. china accountable for what happened in wuhan and how this virus has just spread to millions of people and affected the world economically it's affected everyone yeah um emotionally socially physically it's just um yeah. So you guys let us know how you think China should be punished and what con other countries should do and what your yeah. country is doing um, to hold them accountable. And um, hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.